This next fly will be a lost and spent partridge caddis. This imitates a caddis after it's come back to the water and laid its eggs um, and is laying flat or close to flat on the water. So we're going to tie this with a little bit more spread out wings than, than your conventional caddis pattern. This is really a pretty simple fly to tie as well. We're going to tie it on a Tiemco 100. Um, this is a size 14. The abdomen is going to be tied with olive superfine dubbing. The thorax is peacock curl. The hackle is brown and grizzly rooster or neck hackle, dry fly hackle, and we're going to mix that together. And the wings are going to be Hungarian partridge body feathers. I've picked out a couple of dark ones here, but a partridge hide has got a variety of different colors, ranging from real light gray modeling to some very dark colored stuff. Um, pick whichever matches the caddis in your area. I'm going to use ADOT black thread on this one. Um, if you're tying a much lighter colored, fly, you might want to go to a lighter color thread, but I'm going to be able to hide this thread for the most part um, as we tie, so the, the color is not going to show up very much. I'm going to start off by starting the thread about the midpoint on the hook. I'm going to wrap back to the bin, just creating a thread base. And I'll bring the thread back to just in front of the hook point. The first step is we're going to dub the abdomen. So we're going to take a little pinch of dubbing, and we're going to, we're going to apply it to the thread. I want to keep it nice and thin so that I can really taper the body and shape everything up nicely. I'm going to start at the back, get my first turn of dubbing here at the bend, and I'll work forward from there to just past the midway point. I'll work back and forth just a bit to smooth that taper out a little. And I want to keep this body relatively thin. This is a spent caddis, so it's already laid its eggs. There's not much left in its body, so we want to keep it relatively thin here. And I'm going to continue with my thread base right up to the hook eye and back again. Now at this point we're going to tie our wings in. And the trick to doing these wings is I've picked out two feathers. And I like feathers that have a relatively square tip. I'm going to set these opposed so they're back to back, curving away from each other. And I want to square their tips up a bit, like so. I'll pinch the tips together. And I'm going to draw all this fluff down that's not in my fingertips off into a separate club. So I get two nice little wing stumps here. I'm going to scale these down just a little bit more. And it's sometimes easier to strip the fibers off the base of the feather. Um, I like to have those stems available if I need to adjust them. So I don't want to cut them off, but it, you can strip them down a little bit. And I'll peel some of these fibers away. So I've got just two triangle shaped feathers that are opposed like so. I'm going to measure these about a shank length long. And when I go to tie these in, you want to make sure that you don't tie them in by that bare stem. You want to tie them in up on the fibers. So I should have a little more than a shank length worth of feather here in my fingers. I'll measure about a shank length long, and I'll stagger those back. And then I'm going to set these on edge, right on top of the fly. Now the easiest way to tie this in and keep them centered is with a pinch wrap. So I'm going to close that pinch wrap down and anchor that in place. We want these wings sort of splayed out across the top of the fly to imitate the spread wings of the natural as it dies. I'm going to wrap forward over those stubs just to anchor things down. And I'll trim the butt ends off. And I'll bring the thread back to the front edge of the body. At this point, I'm going to tie in one brown and one grizzly feather, both sized appropriately to the hook. Um, I like to go maybe just a little short on my hackle compared to most other tires. Um, I think it's a little more accurate. A, an undersized hackle makes your fly seem just a little bit smaller, which in most cases is much better than just a little bigger than the natural. I'm going to strip both of those feathers, and I've got one stacked right on top of the other. I'm going to strip both of them so I've got a little bit of bare stem here, and I'm going to tie that in, both feathers at the same time, right at the front edge of the wing there. And I'll wrap forward over those stubs to anchor them. I've got the insides of both of those feathers facing down toward the body of the fly. Now the thorax on this fly is peacock curl. So I'm going to take three or four hurls. And you can use the bigger, bushier stuff on this size fly. I'm going to trim the tips so that they're all square. And I'll tie these in, again, right at the base of the wing. And wrap forward over the stubs up to the hook eye. And I'll wrap this peacock curl forward. And you can see how bushy this peacock curl comes out. 
right up to the eye and I'll tie it off with a couple nice tight turns of thread and trim the stubs. Get just a couple of turns there to smooth things off at the front end. So I've got a smooth base to tie my hackle off here in a minute. Now I'm going to palmer both my hackle feathers forward over this peacock curl, both at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and tie this off at the front end. A couple nice tight turns of thread. Come in and trim those stubs. Smooth thread head just to cover those butt ends. And then I'll whip finish. Now one thing you can do on a partridge caddis, and I typically won't do this until I'm on the water because this fly will work as an adult caddis as well, particularly with that long, long hackle. Um, in some cases though, you want this fly to set even lower um, when fishing it as a true spent caddis. So I can come in and come straight across the bottom of the fly and trim all that hackle flat so the fly sits real flush on the water. But like I say, I don't typically do that until I'm actually out on the water fishing it. Um, it just gives me the option of fishing the fly as a high floating adult or as a low floating spent caddis. Um, tie a few of these up. You can vary the colors very easily. Just a matter of changing the dubbing color and perhaps changing so up some of the natural colors on the partridge hide. But again, a real simple fly. Um, not too many tricks to it and pretty successful too.